I'm going to turn briefly, um, there's been a lot of audit um, information today, to the August financials, which are in your packet, and um, start with the balance sheet, and just call your attention to two items um, that are maybe a little different. There is, you'll see a new line at the bottom of the assets, called Restricted Assets for Capital Projects, with $52 million there. That is the state lottery bond proceeds that were granted to TriMet on the first of the balance sheet. Right after the delegated authority report, uh, the first... Like, no. Right before the blue sheet. So yes, right. The first page right before. I'm going to try that in the right order here a bit. So this $52 million, this is good news, is um, the, our first draw on the state lottery bond proceeds granted to TriMet um, for expenditure on the Portland-Milwaukee line. Um, it's the first installment of the $250 million grant, which was approved by the legislature to fund the early stages of the project. So it's very important early money, and we've met all the requirements and are drawing down as we need to. So you will see that number continuing. And under liabilities, one thing I'd like to point out, if you look compared to last year, you'll see that long-term debt is less than last year. And that's primarily because we continue to pay down the 2006 bonds as we receive FTA grants for the Green Line. So as we all know, the Green Line is open, construction is completed. But this just illustrates um, how FTA grants continue to come in after we've expended the funds. So as we've mentioned before, we anticipate the rest of those funds coming, down, coming in next spring, and we will then pay down or defease the remaining portion of the 2006 debt. But it's a way to see on the balance sheet this leg of how FTA funds come in after we spent the money. Um, if you turn to the operating, expense, uh, operating statement, I'm going to start with expenses. And it's difficult to draw any conclusions um, with two months of data. But we're, as we've said all along, we're watching the budget very carefully this year. Um, and so far, we're seeing expenses under budget. And I just want to highlight one item, which is the Lyft access Accessible Transportation Programs, which are significantly under budget in the first two months, of about 14%. And this is consistent with what, we're, um, what, with what staff has seen, which is there's been lower usage of the Lyft program. And we believe um, that this is due to lower employment, uh, consistent with what we're seeing in the region, which I'll talk about later. Um, on the revenue side, again, two months of data, but we're seeing overall passenger revenue lower than budgeted by about 6.5%. And as we dis will discuss, we did um, anticipate some growth in passenger revenue this year with the introduction of the Green Line. These are August figures, which are before the Green Line, but we're just watching these numbers very carefully. Um, we're also, of course, watching payroll tax data very closely. And I'm looking at actual tax receipts, which we get weekly from Oregon Department of Revenue. So I have data from last Friday, which is shown in, in the August close. And what that shows, appears to show, is that first quarter receipts, July, August, September, are down about 3% from last year. And that's even though the tax rate is higher this year. So as you recall, our fiscal year 10 budget that you approved assumes a negative growth in payroll taxes through the end of this calendar year. But if it continues at this rate of decline, it will actually be worse than what we projected. So again, two months of data, two and a half months are hard to draw a conclusion, but we're monitoring this very carefully and we'll report back to you. Um, in the context of the overall economy, um, there are signs nationally that the steep decline had in, is leveling off nationally, and many people will say we probably hit the bottom. But many economists, and in particular the Oregon State economists, believe that recovery and job growth is going to be slow or flat for at least a year. And I think that's what we were seeing. Last month, we showed some little bit of positive in the July employment growth, and, and not growth, but slowing of decline. But the August data, which came out this week for the state and, and our three counties, is very negative for all three counties. The unemployment rate rose um, in all counties. Multnomah is at 11.9%. It's, I think, the highest rate 
ever or close to it. Clackamas 11.5 and Washington at 10.4. As you recall last month, might recall last month, Washington actually the unemployment rate went down. It was down to 9.7, and so a big jump this month. Um, all of our counties are higher than the national rate of 9.7 percent, and all three counties have lower employment than last month by over 3,000 jobs. And the statistic I keep looking at is where we are from one year ago, and our three counties have 54,000 fewer jobs than one year ago. Um, so while there are hopeful signs of national economic recovery, such as the improving stock market, which we're all happy to see, and more housing starts, our tax receipts and the local employment uh, picture has not shown that recovery. And because our payroll receipts are dependent on wage and job growth in our region, um, we're not optimistic right now about a quick turnaround. Um, so we'll continue to monitor and report. I'm sorry for the <laughs> bad news. Um, and just to, to conclude, um, I just want to call your report briefly to the investment report. There are no significant changes since August. And um, as has always been the case, our portfolio remains invested. Over three quarters of it is in um, U.S. Treasuries and agencies, all rated AAA. And um, the rest of virtually all of the rest of it is in the state of Oregon local government investment pool, invested by our treasurer. Happy to take any questions.